Hey everybody, Josh KI6NAZ here. Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today we're going back to the roots a little bit and we're going to talk about programming the Baofeng, particularly the UV5R. But this will work with just about any radio that you can program in Chirp. Chirp is free downloadable software that is very easy, I feel, to get a radio up and running. So let's get started. Before we dive right into the details here, I will mention right up front, we are going to be using the FTDI cable, the legit chip cable that's available on Amazon. There are lots of ways to interface with Baofengs with different cables. This one, however, works with every computer that I have plugged it into. So if you've ever had a problem with programming your Baofeng, it's almost always this cable that you need to solve the problem. So I'll post the link in the description. You can get it on Amazon, it's like 20 bucks. Once you have it though, you can use this with any of your Baofengs that have the same chip or plug type, you're good to go. So to kick things off, I want to itemize how we're going to go through this programming effort. Most of it's very easy. Some of it requires work on your end, and then there's a maintenance, I call it. So step one is you're gonna program the simplex frequencies or the two-way frequencies that you're going to have towards the top, at least that's how I do it. We're following kind of my method to the madness here. I put my simplex frequencies at the top that the radio can operate on. Then I put my weather channels. I leave those off the scanning selection capability, which we'll talk about when we go to the desktop. And then I put repeaters and then interoperability frequencies that you may want like FRS, GMRS, MERS, etc. Now the effort that you have to put in here is that you yourself are going to have to figure out what frequencies are popular in your area. It's true that there are repeater references that you can look at for your area, but if you just copy those over to your radio, having limited memory, you only have like 125 or 128 memory slots on your Baofeng, you're gonna fill those up really quickly depending on where you live. So just putting everything over there wastes a lot of space in potentially repeaters that aren't very much used. So if you have to, the best thing you do, the easiest thing to do is throw them all over there, program the radio, and then just start scanning. And as you find repeaters that are being used, write them down, make a note, make a mental note, whatever you wanna do, and then start culling out repeaters where you never hear any activity. It's possible that they're never used. Uh, there's a lot of repeaters out there, unfortunately, that are like that. They're kinda of like repeater ghost towns. The buildings are all there, the structures are there, but nobody's home. Now lastly, public service, fire, police, all those frequencies. In the United States, we live in a very difficult world when it comes to scanning nowadays. Since so many of these entities are going to encryption, it makes it really hard to program your Baofengs to be able to receive them because you can't. It's just gonna sound like crazy little digital noises. So what I do is I try and listen with a receiver, an SDR or something like that on a wide bandwidth space on those frequencies to see where the activity is. This takes a long time. You're gonna have to kind of methodically go about this process. Again, you can do the same thing you do with repeaters, load up a bunch of those frequencies onto your radio. You can skip the ones that have encryption and then just start culling the herd. If you put some frequencies on there that are never used, you can start stripping them off and, and just forego them completely. But if you want some of those frequencies in, you're gonna to have to do the legwork to figure out which frequencies are gonna work for you. I'm in Southern California, so frequencies that will work with me are not necessarily gonna work where you live if you're somewhere else in the country. Our journey to program the Baofeng starts out simply enough off of chirp.danplanet.com, projects, chirp, wiki, download. And here you can get the most up-to-date downloads. Once you have it downloaded, start chirp. It's a fairly empty looking app. Go to radio, once your radio is connected, download from radio. Uh, COM port is going to be whatever COM port your USB is connected to. Baofeng UV5R, because that's the radio I'm programming. Hit OK. Now, you should see the light flashing on your radio at this point, so you know you got it working correctly. And then we're going to go ahead and pull that up here. This is a out-of-the-box Baofeng, so the programming here is pretty much random. It, it doesn't really matter. So going right off the top, I'm going to go to Import from Stock Config and I want the US calling frequencies. And there's only two that are gonna be available to you. And this is the first time you're probably experiencing this import screen. It looks a little odd, right? Because you see six meter and 230 are, are blanked out. That's because the app knows that this radio does not support the 230 
uh, frequencies, nor does it support six meters. So what we're going to do is we're going to renumber these because it's basically saying, okay, we're going to load the two channels that you selected into the two and four slot. We don't want that. So we're going to do an auto renumbering, which resets the memory to be loaded to zero and one. And that's exactly where we want it. So we hit OK. Now you've got two meter call and 70 centimeter call in the space here, which is exactly what we want. And so then we'll just continue down from the two and, and all the way through the list. So go back to radio. You can go to import from stock. I like to add no weather alerts then. Now it wants to load it in channel one. Again, this is that import screen that I mentioned. So we're just going to add to two. So now it should start with two and load the rest. You don't have to do all of them. In fact, only one or two is going to be a workable from your area. So if you want to do less, that's fine at this point. All right, so let's fill out a lot of these spaces with new repeater frequencies. Go to radio, import from data source, repeater book, and repeater book proximity query. Type in my city, which is Cerritos. I'm in a distance of 40 miles or so. And band, we can just say all. It's going to know that we're only interested in the two meter and 70 centimeters. So sure enough, you know, 1282 megahertz is blanked out because the radio can't work that. So we're gonna get all kinds of new frequencies in. And if we scroll down, we're gonna see something that happens here. It's gonna think that you're out of memory locations if you live in an area like me where there's a lot of, of frequencies. So what you do for that is you click all to select all. So now we've selected it even though it's outside of our memory space and we click auto. That will renumber the location of where we're going to put these frequencies. And quickly, sure enough, we, we get them all down to 92. The problem is we, we may end up losing some because what's going to happen is it's re-autoing it or renumbering it to memory slot 0. But we need to put them in slot 12. So we add 10, moves it up to 10, and then we add 2. And there we go, memory slot 2. That orange went away. That means you're in a free spot. And let's hit OK. All right, so now it's populated the entire set of frequencies. And when we get down to the bottom here, we actually have a couple left over to play with for first responders, public service, whatever else you'd like to add there. I'll add this in for those of you who might want to spend a little bit of money to get up-to-date frequencies. The Radio Wef Reference website is a valuable resource, but the problem with it is if you want to load into Chirp, you're going to have to pay money. Otherwise, you can go in by hand. So I'm going to click California. I'm going to click Los Angeles County. And here are all kinds of public service frequencies, fire, police, etc., that you could want to add. This is way more than you need. And a lot of them, you see that encrypted voice. There's not much you can do with them. However, if you wanted to access them via Chirp, you would go over to radio, import from data source, radioreference.com. Now here, you'd have to type in your username. So once you've typed in your username, password, provide a zip code, and hit OK. It's going to take a little while, and it's going to populate a list. The thing to keep in mind here is that you pay for this. It's a yearly subscription. And it can be useful if you program a lot of these radios, or you have a capability to use the frequencies in a portable way like this. But if you don't, it's OK. You can do it manually, and, and frankly, because everything's going to an encrypted state, there's not much you can do with, uh, with the frequencies once you have them. So keep that in mind. After waiting an absorbent amount of time, you'll get a list eventually with a lot of things blocked out because the, re the radio is just not going to be able to operate on them. And that's OK. So what I do here is I click None um, because we're going to go through here and be a little bit more selective with how we do this. I also will change the comment or sort by the comment to get a list of by name makes it a little bit easier to sort through. Particularly, I'm looking for Cerritos or Lakewood, California. So we're going to scroll down here till we get to Cerritos. All right, so the two frequencies I add, Lakewood Cerritos and Lakewood Simplex, I go ahead and add those. We're going to add them to slots 105. So we're going to do uh, auto. We're going to add 100. And then we're going to add 5. There you go. Now, something that I do with frequencies like this, obviously, we don't want to transmit on these. I change, I change duplex to off. 
and you're going to have to do this twice, one for every one of these frequencies. So that means you can't transmit. You can receive on that frequency, but you cannot transmit. I do the same for the weather stations, which if we go back up here, they are right here. We go to duplex. The downside of this is it takes a while. You're going to end up having to click a lot of off and you've got to do three clicks every time you make it. So you click one to change, two to drop it down, and then another one for four clicks. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Kind of a pain in the butt, but um, boy, you, you don't want to accidentally transmit on these frequencies. So make sure you do this, keep yourself out of trouble. I also, on the weather frequencies, I like to click skip. And the reason for that is when I'm scanning, I don't want to waste time stopping on the weather station because it's always transmitting. So when you get your local frequency and you know it's good, and you're always going to hit it, you're always going to stop the scan there and then it's going to wait a couple of seconds and then keep going. So forget that. I click skip and move on my way so I never get bothered by it. All right, so continuing on, we have a couple, we got a lot of repeaters, a couple of tactical frequencies and the local sheriffs. We're gonna add just a couple more here. We're gonna go back to radio, import from data source, sorry, import from stock settings, and we're gonna go to the FRS and GMRS channels. We're at slot 107, so we're gonna go to auto. We're gonna add 100, and then we're gonna go to seven, and we're going to click OK. So that pretty much fills up this Baofeng. Uh, in fact, I think we dropped off a couple of the GMRS. So this, this memory location, all these memories are filled up now. So you want to save. Make sure you save so you can change this easily. File, save as. Um, I have a Baofeng directory. I already have one here. I'm just going to overwrite it. We'll overwrite. And now we're going to save or load these frequencies onto the radio. There's really only a couple of actual radio settings that I change. The big one is that AB channel. I make the A channel a frequency channel, meaning it displays the memory information as its frequency, and the B channel, I display the name of the channel. That way, if you're ever curious which channel you're working on or which memory slot, you just flip both of those channels over to the same memory location and you'll get the frequency readout and the name. That makes it really easy to explain who you're talking to via the call sign of the repeater. All repeaters use their call sign as an identifier for amateur radio space. So saving this off couldn't be easier. Hit radio, upload to radio, same thing as you did before to read, and then hit OK. Ideally, the green light should be flashing now and that's going to tell you that the read, or in this case, the write, sorry, uh, is going as planned. We've obviously got this progress bar here, so that's telling you everything you need to know. Hopefully, this will be successful. It went away, so that means it's good. Your radio resets, and you're off to the races. All right, so last thing to show you on Chirp here. Let's say you forgot a repeater, and you want it right at the top of the list because you lose it a lot, like this Catalina Amateur Radio Repeater Association. So they are on 147.9.090. So when we head back to Chirp and we right click and try to add a record above, it's going to do this waiting for radio or it's going to complain that there's no space. So you can either delete this record or you can delete something below that you don't want. So let's in this case, we're going to delete this memory. We don't want to shift the blocks up and, and we don't want to shift all the memories up. We're just going to delete this record. And then we can go in here and we can type 147.090. Uh, let's check back to the repeater. And it is a plus with no PL. Oh, that makes it easy. So we go to the offset here or duplex. We select plus. If this was a tone repeater, we would type in the tone to match. We'd select it. But in this case, we just turn it to none. And then we'd save it and re-upload it. And that's pretty much all you have to do if you want to change records once they're in your radio programming. Now, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everybody that I'm providing this information to help others in programming their radio and that there are very real repercussions if you use this information inappropriately. There are frequencies you should never transmit on. And if you are not an amateur radio operator, transmitting on the amateur radio operator frequencies 
is illegal. And yes, I know many of you are watching this and thinking to yourself, when there's an emergency, it doesn't matter. I can transmit wherever I want. That's true. However, there are finite times where that's actually possible. And there have been instances where people in an emergency have transmitted on emergency frequencies, saved a life or saved property, and still got fined. So, you know, you were all adults or <laughs> you may have some kids watching. Regardless, a crime is still a crime. Don't commit any crimes. That's the point of this. Don't commit any crimes, particularly with what I'm telling you. So, FYI. And if you followed all my suggestions, you now have a programmed radio. So again, what you're gonna do at this point, make sure you hit the orange button until it says you're in memory mode. So it's gonna show numbers on the top here and then hold down the scan button. It's the asterisk symbol and it'll begin scanning. It's gonna stop every once in a while when it hears activity. Just because memories don't actually have activity on them at any one time, that doesn't mean the repeater is empty or a ghost town as I would call it. It just means that there's not anything on right now. Do your due diligence and make sure you're scanning often and make a note, memory channel 120 activity, such and such call sign for the repeater. And do this over and over again until you kind of get a good idea of which repeaters are popular. Also, you'll likely find repeaters that you want to interact with. Make sure you record those as well. Then go back into Chirp at some later date and remove the repeaters that you don't need because really there's no point in keeping them around, particularly in an emergency situation where you don't really know the community involved. It's a lot easier to just have a, a list of a couple repeaters you like that you can use. Now, there are a ton of frequencies that may be more important for your geographic area. And the best way to find out about those frequencies is get on repeaters in your local area, talk to hams in your local area, like through joining a club, get involved with Aries, get involved with CERT. There are going to be specific frequencies that you are going to want to have on your radio. To enter those, you just right click, add a record or type in on one that you're not using and upload it at that point. So that's pretty much it to get most of the way there with a Baofeng or similar Chinese radio. Like I said, they, they mainly all work in the same capacity using Chirp as the way you would program them. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments below or join our Facebook group or our Discord where we take questions all the time. There's a ton of knowledgeable people, not just myself, that can help you out at any time. Hopefully this was helpful and interesting. And let me know how you do with the programming. Like I said, the cable is what's gonna separate success from a lot of headaches and banging your head against the wall. So check that link out in the description. If you have not already, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it if you checked out our live stream, which is every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or 0100 UTC. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Ham Radio Crash Course, and I'll talk to you again soon.